Hello, this is the third video in the series on organometallic compounds, and today we're going to talk about the fairly simple but very useful reaction called the Cori House reaction. And this reaction involves starting with Gilman reagents, which you remember are dialkyl copper lithiums, and reacting them with an, another molecule, which is an alkyl halide. So it's a Gilman reagent, and we had an alkyl halide to it. And what it does is um, the R group from the Gilman reagent acts as a nucleophile, comes in, attacks the back of the carbon of the alkyl halide, pushes out the halogen, and so you get a new carbon-carbon bond between this R group and the, that R group, and we make a compound that is a longer chain than either of the two to begin with. In other words, it's a carbon-carbon bond-making reaction. So that's why we put an asterisk next to it. So this is a very useful reaction in that we can build up bigger skeletons from smaller skeletons. Now you may think about that, and if these are just two regular alkyl groups, then this kind of compound would be an alkane. And as you know, making alkanes is not all that useful, because typically we don't use alkanes for much of anything except burning them. So you wouldn't make a particular alkane for that particular reason. But as we will see, it is useful because both this R group and this R group can have other functionalities within them. But notice that this is not a balanced equation. In fact, you may wonder, well, if one of these two R groups goes with that R prime group to make the alkane, what happens to the other R group from here? Well, the answer is you actually use both of them, and so you put in two equivalents of the alkyl halide. So I've shown the balanced equation here. Here's the Gilman reagent, and here is the alkyl halide, two equivalents of it. And so we make a compound that has two R groups up together. The byproducts here, and I know some people find it useful to keep in, keep in mind what are the byproducts, well, the copper goes with one of the halogens, the lithium goes with the other halogen, and we end up with copper bromide and lithium bromide. And those generally just disappear from the reaction by either filtration or going to the bottom. So here's an example. If we start with dicyclopentyl copper lithium, as the Gilman reagent, and ethyl bromide as the alkyl halide, the cyclopentyl and the ethyl will link together and make cyclopentyl ethane, or ethyl cyclopentane, however you prefer to name it. This would commonly, I mean, this is the balanced equation right here, but commonly you just write it as, here's the Gilman reagent, here's the alkyl halide, and we get the alkane, in this case, from that. So here are some examples of the Cori House reaction. Here's the Gilman reagent. In this case, it's diethyl copper lithium. Here's the alkyl halide. In this case, it's isobutyl bromide. And the ethyl group from the Gilman reagent and the isobutyl group from the alkyl halide link. Here's the ethyl group. Here's the isobutyl group. This is the carbon-carbon bond that we made. And notice that we made a carbon skeleton that has a total of six carbons in it from one that had four and one that had two. Now, this is just an alkane, and alkanes typically are not all that useful, but notice that we can have other functional groups in both the Gilman reagent and also within the alkyl halide itself. So in this particular case, I've taken diallyl, remember this is the allyl group, diallyl copper lithium, and combined it with this alkyl halide that also has a methoxy group on the second carbon, so it's both an alkyl halide and also an ether. But it doesn't matter, ethers are okay, alkenes are okay, so we can just link this allyl group, here it is, here's the allyl group, and this three carbon chain with a methoxy on the second carbon, here's a three carbon chain with a methoxy on the second carbon, and those will link to make this new compound, which has a new carbon-carbon bond, so this is a much bigger carbon skeleton than either of the ones we started with, but notice that it also has an alkene and a methoxy group in it. So this particular compound would be five methoxy, one hexene, two new functional groups in the same molecule. Very useful. And then this one at the bottom just illustrates the fact that the alkyl halide doesn't have to have the bromine or the chlorine or iodine on a saturated carbon. It's actually on a alkene carbon in this case, and that works just fine in this particular molecule. So in this case, you would have the cyclopentyl group linking with the propenyl group, and you would make this particular interesting molecule, cyclopentyl propene. There are some limitations to the Cori House reaction, as we've seen before, because the Gilman reagent isn't organometallic. You can't have groups like hydroxy groups, so you can't have alcohols, you can't have aldehydes and ketones in the same molecule, you can't have nitro groups or amino groups or terminal alkynes. In other words, you can't have a triple bond if there's a hydrogen on the end of it. But those are typically true for all organometallic compounds. 
But for the Cori House reaction, it turns out the alkyl halide itself cannot be tertiary. And that makes sense if you think about it, because the Gilman reagent, being an organometallic, is a strong base. And what do we know the strong bases do with tertiary alkyl halides? They eliminate like a shot. And so therefore you would get elimination products, not substitution, and you would not get the product that you want. So that's a limitation. The alkyl halide can't be tertiary. So here's an example. Let's say we wanted to make this particular molecule. Notice it has a total of eight carbons, and I'm asking that you make it from alkyl halides of four, four or fewer carbons. So this is a four carbon piece, and this is a four carbon piece, so we're going to want to make that carbon-carbon bond right there. So one of the parts will have to be an alkyl halide, the other part will have to be a Gilman. The restriction says that the alkyl halide cannot be tertiary, but the Gilman can. So this will be our Gilman reagent, this will be our alkyl halide. One further thing, notice that in this case I'm asking that you start only with alkyl halides, which means the Gilman reagent that you're going to have to use to make this will have to be itself synthesized from an alkyl halide. So you'll have to go back and think about how do you make Gilman reagents in the first place. So pause the video and uh, write out your synthesis and then we'll answer it on the next screen. Okay, here we go. So here's our target molecule down here. How are we going to make this carbon-carbon bond? Well, one part of it, in this case the N-butyl group, will be our alkyl halide, so we have a bromine on there. The other part of it, in this case the T-butyl group, will be our Gilman reagent. And so the T-butyl group and the N-butyl group will link together to make this alkane. This is the key step. This is the carbon-carbon bond-making reaction in the synthesis. But how do you make this particular Gilman? Since the directions, unfortunately, say starting with alkyl halides, and this is not an alkyl halide, you're going to have to show how do you make that. In other words, as we've talked about before, let's assume in this case that you have a stock room full of only alkyl halides. So this is not something you can get off the shelf. You have to show how you would you make it from an alkyl halide. Well, if you remember, go back and review an earlier video, but you make Gilman reagents from organolithiums by adding copper iodide. So this organometallic turns into this organometallic. That's still not an alkyl halide, so how do we make that? Well, you make it from the corresponding alkyl halide with lithium metal. So the practicality is you would take T-butyl bromide off the shelf, you put it in a flask with some solvent, you would add lithium to it, let it react to form this material. Then you would add into the flask some copper iodide. That would very rapidly form this material. And then into the flask you would add some N-butyl bromide, and that would rapidly make this material, which then you would have to fish out of there, purify, and so on. Now let's do one more example of a synthesis, and I'll let you work on this one yourself, and we'll talk about it in class if you want to. But I'm asking for you to make this compound, which is a little more complicated. It has a double bond, and it has an ether functionality in it. In other words, it's one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row, and then with an epoxy group attached to that carbon, it also has a double bond, and it has another methyl group. So I'm asking you to make this compound, outline the steps in the synthesis of this compound from alkyl halides. So again, if you're going to use a Gilman reagent, which you have to since it says using a Cori House reaction, if you're going to use a Gilman reagent, you're going to have to show how do you make that Gilman reagent from an alkyl halide in the first place. So again, analyze this compound, see what pieces you're going to want to stick together, decide which one you want to be your alkyl halide and which one you want to be your Gilman reagent, and show how you would put those together and then how you would make them from alkyl halides in the first place. Thank you for your attention.